It seems like every single pollster, every single forecaster hates Donald Trump. They say he's going to lose. There's no way he can win. Our modeled polling structure says Joe Biden has a comfortable lead of nine points. And if this is all true, it means Donald Trump needs the biggest media and polling upset in U.S. history in order to win. But we have new information coming out from CBS News suggesting Donald Trump will win, but they won't just say it. I wonder if that's the real problem, the bias. You see, CBS has put out a scenario in which Donald Trump does win with 279 electoral votes, and they call it the Republican surge scenario. And you know what their scenario requires? That's right. In order for Donald Trump to win, Republicans need only vote. I kid you not. That's, that's what they're saying. If Republicans actually vote, Trump will win. Are, are you implying Republicans won't vote? Of course they're going to vote. They love the guy. We had 57,000 people in Pennsylvania the other day. Of course they're going to vote. So why didn't CBS just come out and say Donald Trump is forecasted to win? Far be it for me the, to, to question the experts in polling. But they straight up show us in their own data Trump has a massive lead over Joe Biden, 42% in terms of who has or hasn't voted uh, so far and who will vote on election day. In terms of Trump to Biden, he has over 30 point, a 30 point advantage when it comes to election day. So CBS actually comes out and says, Donald Trump will lose Joe Biden with his performance, will eke out a narrow victory. Unless, of course, Republicans show up and vote. We call that the Republican surge. I don't I'm you know what, man, there are good reasons to suggest Donald Trump is not going to win. But when you look at this story, you just have to question what are what what is this? What's going on now? Some people are suggesting this doesn't matter. These forecasts, they don't matter, even though I would say this forecast clearly shows Donald Trump is going to win. Sure, fine. But there are some people saying here's some good reasons that Trump is going to lose. And one of those is that the polls have improved. That's right. The polls are way better now than they were in 2016. We had no idea what we were talking about back then. We fixed everything except, oh, wait, what's this? Polling got Andrew Gillum's victory in Florida very wrong. Eight experts on how that happened. Wait a minute. You mean the polls were wrong in 2016 by a historical margin of five points? And then when you claimed you fixed them, You got the polling in Florida wrong, and now you expect me to believe polling is wrong, is correct? I'm sorry. I just don't. Polling for Trump in Iowa is, is, is doing, he's doing great. He's now up seven points. And apparently some people are saying Iowa is the gold standard. That's how we judge the flyover states. If Trump wins in Iowa, it's all over. And they say, if he wins in Florida, it's all over. If he wins in Pennsylvania, it's all over. Do you know what they may be missing? They may be missing that these Democrats who have actually come out and vote may have they may have voted for Trump. I don't believe there are going to be very many Trump voters who flip because I got to tell you, in my personal experience and uh, from anecdotal evidence and from what I've seen from other personalities, everybody's going the other direction. And it really was the riots. But let me read you the news and I'll explain to you why I think there is there's actually a good chance Trump could win. I'll show you all the reasons people think Trump will lose. And they're the experts. So you can ignore my opinion. I'll just give you my personal thoughts. And then I'll show you one of the best reasons, in my opinion, why you should support the president. But we'll save that one for last. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are many ways you can give. You got a P.O. box. You want to send me some stuff. But the best thing you can do is share this video. My friends, this is it. The final stretch. Everybody wants to know. Everybody needs to know. Share them this video. Share with them this video. If you think I do a good job and you support my channel and really want to help me out. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the, not- hit the notification bell. Let's read from CBS and see what they're all on about. Biden leads. Trump needs election day surge to win from CBS News. They say Joe Biden heads into election day preferred by voters who have already cast their ballots early. President Trump has a lead among those who plan to show up on November 3rd. So will Biden's lead hold up? If we trot out the old horse race analogy, Biden has a lead, but we still don't know how long the track is. We need to see how big that election day vote will be. So we took our baseline state model estimates from our initial polling, which some 
which sums to Biden holding an electoral college lead heading into election day, and also estimated what it would take for each candidate to ultimately win. We estimate from our polling that Mr. Trump is doing on average over 30 points better among likely election day voters than early voters. We know the approximate size of the early vote so far, and we vary the potential size of the election day vote to explore two scenarios. In our Republican surge scenario, the size of the election day vote is relatively large. So given that these voters break for Mr. Trump, it mitigates Biden's early vote edge. And Mr. Trump inches out close wins in enough states to get over 270. They say, we increased the size of the election day vote by an average of seven points in this scenario, while keeping vote preference among early voters and election day voters fixed. But it doesn't take much for this to break big the other way. If some of the people planning to vote on Tuesday decide not to show up, and the size of the election day vote decreases by an average of three points from our initial estimates, the net result is pretty dramatic. Given Biden's overall preference leads, nearly all of the competitive states either flip to Biden or stay in his column, giving him a comfortable win. In our baseline scenario, Biden has a narrow electoral college edge with many states toss-ups. And so you can view them here. Well, here's a map of the Republican surge scenario showing Donald Trump with 279 electoral votes. Well, as you know, we are looking at historical voter turnout. At least that's what everyone's, everyone is saying. I believe that will be the case, considering the fact that in some states, they've already surpassed their 2016 totals. Now, again, I do think there are some good reasons to suggest Trump will lose, and I'll show them to you. But let's do this Republican surge scenario first. If the early votes dominate, Biden will get 375 electoral votes, and it'll be a clean sweep. However, we know that's not going to be the case. Not only that, in early voting in in some states like Michigan, Ohio, and Wisconsin, Republicans are actually up. And Republicans have the advantage in Florida right now relative to 2016, meaning they're still down. Democrats still winning. But advantage means Republicans are doing better this time around than they did in 2016. It also doesn't take into consideration some of these people who have voted and our Democrats may have flipped their vote for Trump. We'll see. They mentioned in the Republican surge scenario, Trump ends up with 279 votes. Here's the best part. So with the Biden campaign having banked so many early votes, Mr. Trump is very reliant on robust turnout among his supporters this Tuesday. Election day voters support the president in large numbers in the most competitive states. The question is, will they follow through? And of course, there's always the question of whether Democrats will match them. Many Democrats have voted early, but many more also remain to still cast ballots including many younger voters on whom the Biden campaign depends. And finally, with all the legal wranglings over ballots and deadlines this year, the estimates do not account for the effects of those proceedings, if any, on the number of ballots ultimately cast and counted. Here's my question. Why didn't CBS News just come out and say, if, if Trump supporters vote, Trump wins? I mean, that, look at what they're saying. They're saying Trump has a uh, uh, large number advantage Election day voters support Trump in large numbers in competitive states. The question is, will they follow through? Why would you assume they wouldn't? They have shown up to Trump's rallies in ridiculous numbers, apparently not too worried about COVID. Joe Biden, on the other hand, not so much. Why would you assume Trump voters wouldn't vote? That I don't get. Unless, it, unless of course, it's because CBS's data shows that when Republicans turn out, Trump wins. They don't want to write a headline saying Trump going to win. So they say Biden leads. Trump needs surge. A surge. That's, are you, look, look at this. The people who have not voted yet vote on, vote, uh, voting on election day. 27% on election day will support Biden and 69% will support Trump. Trump has 42% more voters on election day. If half of them showed up, Trump would get a a 20 some odd percent bump over Biden. Come on, just say it, CBS. Maybe, maybe I just don't get it. Maybe I'm getting it wrong. Fine. But at the end, they're saying, will they really show up? I certainly believe they will. But let me show you. Let me show you because I want to make sure I'm being reasonable. I am no prophet. I don't know everything. Okay, this is just one thing I found interesting. I have this Twitter thread from Laura Bronner. Laura Bronner is the quantitative editor for 538. She said, 
four reasons Biden has a better shot than Clinton did in 2016, and two reasons there's still uncertainty. One, Biden's lead is bigger and more stable than Clinton's was. Clinton's lead was smaller throughout and more unstable. Biden's has never been uh, less than 6.6 points. I would like to offer up a potential agreement and criticism of what she is saying. In the images posted by Laura Bronner, the first shows three people, Trump, Clinton, and Gary Johnson. The second image only shows Biden and Trump. Now, by adding Johnson, you change the numbers. If you do a poll of people and say, if you had to choose between Trump or Clinton, who would you pick? You'll get your results. If you say, if you had to choose between Clinton, Trump, and Johnson, more people will say, okay, well, Johnson, I guess. So we don't know how you actually compare this. The point she's trying to make, however, is that Trump's polls were fluctuating. And there was a period where he actually was briefly above Hillary Clinton. In the polls now, it's pretty static. 52% for Biden and 43.4 for Trump. The reason I bring up the Gary Johnson thing is that it seems in the second poll, those numbers, that four point or so whatever percent, is now going between Trump and Biden. And here's the important thing that's bad news for Trump. Many people are now voting for Donald Trump that didn't vote in 2016. I'm one of them. Johnny Rotten is one of them. I have personal friends and family, and we've heard these stories a lot. That may bump Trump up a couple of points. But many other people who have not voted are voting for Biden. Hillary Clinton was loathed. People wanted to vote for Gary Johnson. People hated Hillary Clinton. Now, the real question is, will they tolerate a Joe Biden? Personally, I can't imagine somebody wanting creepy, sleepy old Joe as president. That's 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 nuts. I mean, listen, I got to say, Trump is bad enough in terms of what I think we should have as a president. Trump's not that bad, mind you. I voted for him, obviously. But seriously, Joe Biden? Yikes, man. So it may be that while Clinton had 45.7 percent to Trump's 41.8, Biden's lead is much larger, but both are higher, meaning while Trump did gain, and we did see those gains, might not be enough to overcome the outrage vote. She says there are fewer undecideds than 2016. A week before the 2016 election, around 14% of respondents say they were undecided or intended to vote third party. And the vast majority of late decided voters voted for Trump. This year, there are much fewer. That's a really important point. State polls have improved. In 2016, it was state polls that had polling errors, in part because they hadn't needed, they hadn't needed to uh, weigh by education before. But polls have improved and there are more state polls now. Perhaps there are many more state polls. That's true. Still, they got polling wrong with Andrew Gillum. So are we supposed to assume the methodology of every single one of these uh, institutions is corrected or even the same? I'm not convinced. They screwed up again in 2018. I'm not going to blindly believe they got it right. And I'll tell you right now, they got very little credibility as far as I'm concerned. But she does go on. Many have already voted. Almost two thirds of the total number of 2016 voters have already voted. This reduces the probability that last minute surprises would drastically swing the race. Not only that, they're ignoring the Hunter Biden October surprise. Not that anyone really cares, in my opinion. I don't think it's swinging that many votes, to be honest. Two reasons there's still uncertainty. The coronavirus pandemic makes everything more complicated. Voting behavior has changed, so it's hard to infer trends. And a rise in cases in the, in the next few days might make people stay home who intend to vote on Election Day. That, in my opinion, the most important point. Yes, the polls may be right. Most people might not want Trump. But many of these Democratic voters are terrified of COVID. Let me, I'll, I'll let you all in on a little secret. I am currently in discussion with a uh, um, very prominent and controversial figure who uh, is very concerned about the globalists. And I would like to have him on my show. I would also like to get a leftist on my show. Well, the leftists I hit up are literally terrified of COVID, even though they know it will be a massive show. They know that it will be wildly entertaining and a huge opportunity. They're saying, but but coronavirus, I, I can't. I'm going to put you in a room with this this villain, uh, this, the, the, the left's prime villain. You can you can discuss things with him. It'll be hilarious. And I'm my, my, the response is, but COVID, if they won't get up for themselves, why would they get up for Joe Biden? 
If people are scared of COVID to the point where they don't want to go outside and travel or do anything, why would they get up and go and vote for Joe Biden on election day? Which brings me back to the main point. When I say CBS's polls for for their forecast actually shows a Republican victory, what I mean to say is expect a Republican surge. And even if not enough Republicans come out, I assure you, if Republicans aren't coming out, Democrats are not coming out either. I believe Republicans are going to be voting more so uh, uh, in person than Democrats for a variety of reasons, COVID being one. But I tell you this, there's an old saying, I can run faster scared than you can mad. The people who are voting for Donald Trump, many of them, not all of them, but many of them are voting because they are scared. They're scared of what will happen if Joe Biden wins. They're scared of the riots. The people on the left are mad. They're mad at Trump. Well, I can run faster scared than you can mad. And what that means is fear is a bigger motivator than anger, in my opinion. And the Democrats have banked everything on anger, a little bit on fear, to be fair. They're going to get some voters. But I think many Trump supporters, I'm not saying they're shaking in their boots. I'm I'm saying that they're saying things like, we need to save this country. I am worried about what happens if Trump loses. Yeah, there's there's fear. Fear is a better motivator. As for the Democrats, the fear of COVID is a better motivator than the anger against Trump, in which case I think Democrats are going to have abysmal election turnout. I mean, what I, what, I, what I mean to say is I think turnout will be historical for sure. But I think COVID has seriously suppressed Democrats in person vote. So I'm not entirely confident. She says the rules are still in dispute in Pennsylvania, Minnesota, Tex- uh, and Texas. This makes it harder to estimate turnout in advance. And the uncertainty and complexity can also depress turnout. In conclusion, a 10% chance is a lot smaller than the 29% chance Trump had in 2016. But events with a 10% chance happen. You know, one in 10 times is less likely, but not impossible. Basically this. And then she shows Nate Silver. Trump can win, but he's more than a normal sized polling error away. He is. But polls are improving. Now, I'm not sure that I'm not I'm not sure if that matters that polls are improving because Tons of people have already voted, but it might because 27 percent of the people who haven't voted yet are Biden supporters. What if their vote changes? What if Hunter Biden swung their opinion? What if it didn't matter anyway? CBS says Republican surge equals Trump victory. Republicans are going to crawl over broken glass to vote for Trump. I voted for Trump and the Republicans, and I never vote. I can't believe it. If I did, I certainly believe Republicans will. Seriously, I'm not even an independent likely voter. I'm a, I'm a left-leaning independent non-voter. And here I am, voting Republican. I have close personal friends surprising me by saying that they too, independent left-leaning non-voters, they went out and voted for Trump. Now we can see what's happening in Iowa. Take, 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 take a look at this. Trump and Ernst take leads over Democrat challengers in Iowa poll. Nobody's going to do for Iowa what I did for Iowa. The president told a rally crowd there last month. Just days before the election, President Trump and U.S. Senator Joni Erst have pulled ahead of their Democratic challengers in the assessment of Iowa voters, a new poll shows. Trump now leads Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden by seven points. Wow. In the previous poll in September, Trump and Biden were tied, each drawing support from 47 percent of voters. Let's pretend a large portion of people voted early. And so they voted for Biden, and now they regret it because things have changed, and Biden has said things. It won't matter. If they were tied, and now Trump has the advantage, Trump's going to comfortably win. At least I think so. Some people are praising Iowa, saying, look, I mean, Iowa's the gold standard. Andrew Neal uh, tweeting this. He is the chairman of the Spectator and Spectator USA, saying, the Iowa poll is gold standard for statewide polling in the U.S., Last night, it put Trump on 48 percent, Biden on 41. Des Moines Register said Biden fading in Iowa, reinforcing Democrat fears he's not finishing strongly. Poll also put Senator Joni Erst 46 to Greenfield, Democrat 42. I think it's fair. I think it's probably accurate. And we have this from Josh Jordan, New Florida Polls. Siena New York Times has Biden 47, Trump 44. But ABC Washington Post has Trump 50, Biden 48. St. Pete polls has Biden 49 to Trump 48, and the Hill Harris acts Biden 50 to 40, 49. 
Biden or Trump could win by 15 points, by 15 nationally. And Florida was always going to be 50.1 to 49.9, no matter who wins the state. This is significant because, first of all, ABC Washington Post has Trump polling ahead in Florida. But more importantly, they are all within the margin of error for the most part. If there is a polling error, five points, that's what we saw in 2016, at least according to the Atlantic, then Trump won these states. I'm sorry, Trump won Florida. Trump absolutely won Iowa. That means Trump's going to win many of these other states as well. And that's based on early voting now. I don't know why the polls are all showing what they're showing, but early voting is not showing the same thing. And CBS forecast based on early voting is not showing the same thing either. It looks like when I'm just going to say it, it looks like the polls are already wrong. I mean, Nate Silver already mentioned that Democrat early uh, and mail vote turnout was extremely high, suggesting Trump supporters are going to come out in force and that late ballots could actually lean Republican. Yet they're still convinced Trump is going to lose. I mean, at, at, at the very least, it looks like to me it's a toss up. I have no idea. It could go either way. But they are adamant. Hey, 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 10 percent is still a great chance to win. Maybe they're just trying to demoralize people. I don't know. That's what some people think. But take a look at this from just the news. A barrage of election lawsuits threaten to delay final results for weeks or more. Many states are looking to the U.S. Supreme Court to decide whether mail ballots can be accepted after Election Day. I don't know what's going to happen. You think Bush v. Gore was bad? I was like 13 or 14 when Bush v. Gore happened. I can't remember. I think I was 14. And I didn't know a whole lot about it. It's kind of crazy, though. It was, it, was, it was still kind of crazy. I remember, I, I, I vaguely remember, it's been a long time. Weren't they like egging Bush's, you know, uh, um, motorcade when like the, the, the limo was coming in? They were just throwing fruits and vegetables and eggs at it. Not my president. They were outraged. They believed that Al Gore should have won Florida and become president. But the Supreme Court intervened. And my understanding is that they stopped uh, the count, resulting in George W. Bush being the president. Maybe, maybe it was right. Maybe it was wrong. But think about all of these states where the lawsuits are already underway. Maybe there won't even be a clean election. Maybe what we're looking at is a dramatic transformation of whatever this country is. And it's about to happen in two days. I hope you all are prepared for what's going to happen. But what I want to do now is I want to explain to you in very, very simple and easy terms why I think it is you should vote for Donald Trump. And this is the part you should probably explain to your friends, to your family. First, Middle Eastern peace deals. Trump and Bolton were bad. When Trump brought on John Bolton, it was bad. Drone strikes were up. It was look and, and he wanted to go into Iran. Well, Trump got rid of Bolton. Bolton does not like Trump. Drone strikes have gone down. And now Trump has signed four historic peace agreements. He has negotiated peace between Kosovo and Serbia. Bahrain the United Arab Emirates, and now Sudan and Israel. In fact, the Sudanese-Israeli peace agreement literally ended a war. The State Department helped negotiate a ceasefire right now uh, uh, over in the Middle East. And Trump is talking about withdrawing our forces from Afghanistan and Iraq. That is tremendous. Maybe you don't care about foreign policy. Well, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette has endorsed a Republican for the first time since 1972. Well, because Trump made the economy work. He brought about jobs. He fought for the working class people. These are excellent reasons to support Trump, despite all of his faults. Now, Joe Biden's got some plans that people like. He's negotiated with progressives. However, I think right now with people scared and the mass buying of guns, Joe Biden's plan to essentially, I mean, Joe Biden, look at his website, ban all online sales of guns and accessories. That would end, that would destroy jobs across this country and thousands upon thousands of jobs. It would destroy businesses outright overnight. That's insane. Seriously insane. Like you order stuff on Amazon for your gun. A lot of, maybe you're not a gun owner, maybe you don't know this, but there's simple things you can order. You can order simple accessories and items and you can buy certain things on guns, but he wants to ban it all. No online sales, I believe, of ammunition, guns and accessories. That would destroy industries across this country. Even if you don't like guns, you can recognize why destroying businesses would be bad. Imagine whatever business you own, Joe Biden said, we're going to end your business. You can't sell anything anymore. You'd be bankrupt overnight. 
That to me is insane. But I give you now the most important, the most important reason. You see, Joe Biden has pledged to do something that I find to be absolutely shocking. I would like you to listen to what he says. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true and international effort to pressure. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true and international effort to pressure. You heard it. Joe Biden is planning to mobilize true and Nineveh to pressure. Let me repeat that for you. True and Nineveh to pressure. I, I listened to this thing like a hundred times to accurately transcribe what he said. And I can't for the life of me tell you what he's trying to say when he says true and Nineveh to pressure. OK, I could try. Is he saying true international cooperation under pressure? <laughs> Maybe. I don't even know what that would, in, what, what would be relating to anyway. True international cooperation under pressure. No, he was just slurring his words. And I got to be honest, me trying to tell you what he was thinking about is n- not legit. I have no idea what this is, but I'm not done. No, no, no. It's funny, right? Well, take a look at this. And I think it's a right for people to have bad health care. Rock and I think it's a right for people to have bad cath care. Bad cath care? Bad cath care. I was he trying to say something about health care? It's a right for people to have bad cath care. What was he trying to say? Listen, you might not like Trump, but I will take a man who can literally insult someone in a nasty way over a guy who can't say English words. Recently, Joe Biden was doing an interview or something. And he said, we've created, he said that the Democrats created the largest voter fraud organization in history. Everybody laughed. On, on, on the right, people are like, oh, I can't believe he just came out and said it. Freudian slip, losing his filter. And the left and the media were like, what a gaffe. How do we know it's a gaffe? You want me to make assumptions about what he was saying? The dude said, true and nana, sh- true and nana de shaba. <laughs> I don't even know what he said. True and nana de shaba de- True and Nana Shabbat of pressure. True and Nana. I don't even know. You see, you see the problem with this? Bad a cath care. Were you trying to say health care to dude? But what's bad? Badic? Barack? Barack health care? Obamacare? Barack Obama? I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't. And I am I will I'll tell you this. If Joe Biden wins, I will probably laugh so hard I will break a rib. You know why? Let me just tell you. I think I've given some basic reasons why you should vote for Trump. At least it's why I'm going to do it. But let me let me just say, if this guy beats Trump, Trump can't beat the guy saying bad cath care and true and nana de shop, true and nana shaba de pressure. And then Trump deserves to lose. <laughs> I got to be honest. Look, man, I'll tell you this. I worry about my country. I worry about my community, my friends and my family. And I worry about myself. But I'm confident I can take care of myself. I'm confident I will survive. And I'm confident no matter what comes my way, I'll be all right. I'm sure many of you are as well. So if Biden wins, well, you just try again, I guess. I do have fears about what he'll do and what he'll let the radical leftists do. I fear that he won't be able to speak proper English and he's going to be sitting down with some foreign leader and say something insane. He literally said he's running a voter fraud organization. What, that, that wasn't gibberish. He literally said those words. So what if he's sitting down with someone and says, instead of, instead of saying something like, we're going to disarm our nukes, he says, we're going to arm our nukes. That's not out of the realm of possibility for someone who says bad cath care and true and not a <laughs> true and not a shot of pressure. I think I've made my point. Look, I don't know what the polls, are, polls mean. I don't know what the forecasts are. We are in the final stretch of the race. Ladies and gentlemen, go out and vote. Vote for who you think is the right choice. And, uh, I guess we'll see how things play out. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastnews. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.